all renegades of puck to the trenches. Welcome to the bunker. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonier. Welcome to a unique hockey presentation, the essence of no half stepping. How can you get in touch with the Renegades of Puck? Well, it's very easy. Just go to renegadesofpuck.com. Right there, you'll find links to our merchandise and all other access points to the Renegades of Puck. We've just released an alternate logo, and we have plenty of great new merchandise out there. We sure would appreciate if you would go out and sport some Renegades of Puck merchandise. We sure do appreciate each and every one of you stick taps love and respect to each and every one of you have already purchased our renegades of puck original t-shirt we marked it down so we could get more of those out there and in circulation as the season goes along so again we really appreciate you going to renegades of puck.com and checking out all of those great things social media youtube we're now over 100 subscribers and we want to keep getting that up please give us a subscription give us a comment give us a like pass the links around and help us grow this brand new unique hockey experience facebook very easy give us a follow twitter at renegades of puck go ahead and give us a follow right there and retweet us like us and again pass the links around we've made things look really good on twitter we're even making separate one minute promos just for Twitter so that you guys can have a little bit of extra eye candy going into the video to get the link a little bit more presentation out there and a few more eyeballs on them. And remember, we have great partners here at Renegades of Puck TV, Rebirth Sports, this jersey, so many other jerseys. They are just an incredible company that not only makes jerseys, but they can outfit your entire hockey operation. They are simply jersey tailors, great partners, and I have really enjoyed working with them over the many, many years that I have worked Worn Rebirth Sports gear. And of course, Stripe Design and Digital. We appreciate Stripe so much. Help design this logo, helps keep the website up and running, and is helping us get our marketing plan up and running and keeping everything moving forward. And Strong Style Fit, 150 fitness videos available now from a certified personal trainer, completely available to you on YouTube and 100% for free. It's a donation-based service, so we sure would appreciate it if you gave some stick taps over to Strong Style Fit. Now, let's get into it. We really need to get into a lot of things with the Nashville Predators coming back off of this road trip, the CMA road trip now. 3-1-1 one one on the trip so far, 7 out of 10 total points. And we said getting over 50% of the points would be considered a successful road trip. Well, the Nashville Predators have already secured that. Now they have an opportunity to close out the road trip in St. Louis against the first place St. Louis Blues, the first of four meetings on the season between the Preds and division rival St. Louis. The Nashville Predators will have an opportunity coming off of tonight's victory in Dallas to go in and secure two more points against the St. Louis Blues and make this an incredibly successful road trip for the Nashville Predators. Now, the St. Louis Blues are in first place in the Central Division. They played 11 games this season. They're 8-2-1. and one. They have 17 total points. They have a record of 3-1 and one on home ice, and they're the only team in the Central Division to score 40 goals on the season. For the Nashville Predators, they sit in fourth place with a record of 7-5-1. and one. They have 15 points, which means the Preds are only two points behind the first place St. Louis Blues, which means tonight's matchup is going to be for first place in the Central Division. Yes, the Preds will have played two more games than the St. Louis Blues, but it is pretty incredible after 14 games if the Preds secure this victory and this long road trip to see the Preds at least pacing the top teams in the Central Division. The Preds have a road record of 4-2-1 and one on the season. I mentioned the first of four games between the Preds and the St. Louis Blues this season. The next one won't happen until January 7th when the Preds will make their second and final trip to St. Louis. And then two games at Bridgestone Arena. The first will come on March the 12th, the second on April the 17th. And that will wrap up the regular season series between the Nashville Predators and the St. Louis Blues. Now, before we get into all of the numbers and the particulars about the St. Louis Blues, let's talk about the Preds. Finally, the CMA road trip has wrapped up after the St. Louis game, and they will get one home game against the Arizona Coyotes. Now, I am concerned. The Arizona Coyotes, yes, are the last place team in the Central Division, but so far, the Nashville Predators haven't gotten up for a good or competitive against bad teams, and I feel that this one-game homestand could be a trap, but that's something we can talk about coming up in the future. After the Preds deal with the Arizona Coyotes, they are on the road again, this time off to the Northeast. Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal will be the next three games for the Nashville Predators after Arizona, and then they'll be back home to face off against Anaheim. Now, I mentioned the St. Louis Blues not only being in first place, but having 40 goals for on the season, and the last five games for St. 
St. Louis on the 30th of October. It was a one nothing win versus Chicago on the 3rd of November. It was a 3-2 to shootout loss at the LA Kings. Then on the next night, a 5-3 to win at San Jose. Got on that road trip continuing in Anaheim with a 4-1 to loss, and they wrapped up that road trip on the 9th of November with a 3-2 to shootout win at Winnipeg. Bennington went 39 out of 41, and St. Louis won't play again until Saturday in Carolina. So for the Nashville Predators, getting a St. Louis Blues team that has been out there on the road for the last four games, still sitting well in first place in the Central Division. Now, one of the reasons St. Louis Blues are sitting in first place is the amount of goals. I've already mentioned the goal total, but goals per game. 3.55, that is fourth best in the NHL, while the Nashville Predators are ranked 24th in the NHL in goals for a 2.69. The Preds, a razor narrow thin margin between victory and defeat this season, and that is because goals for a 2.69, goals against at 2.69, and that is 11th in the NHL, while the St. Louis Blues at 2.36 is third best in the NHL. Shots for 11th for St. Louis, 30th for Nashville. Shots against 24th for St. Louis. Lewis and 13th for the Nashville Predators. Now, special teams, very interesting between these two teams. The Nashville Predators power play is actually ranked sixth best in the NHL. They're converting at 26.3%. That's 10 out of 38 on the season. Now, the St. Louis Blues power play, though, is second best in the NHL. The Nashville Predators have certainly had their share of top-end power play units on this road trip. 9 out of 27 on the season, or 33.3%. Their penalty kill unit, fourth best in the league. They've only given up four power play goals. Again, the Nashville Predators have now given up nine power play goals against. Taking a look inside the stats and the info for these two teams, Philip Forsberg, of course, has been added to injured reserve, so that makes that official carry. We are not aware of his status as of when we sat down to record this show. Hopefully, he is going to be all right. We will cover that in the recap here in just a couple of minutes, but hopefully, Alex Carrier is okay and will be returning back to Nashville very soon and very healthy and getting back into the lineup. Statistically, for the Nashville Predators, the captain, Roman Yossi, still leads the team in scoring with 12 points, four goals, and eight assists. Matt Duchesne, just red hot and rejuvenated, six goals now and five assists on the season for 11 points. Mikhail Granlin, two goals and nine assists for 11 points. Ryan Johansson at five goals and four assists for nine points. And Tanner Janot, five goals and two assists for seven points on the season. And we'll be seeing Riddich in net in this game on the second night of back-to-backs. We have no stat line on him because he was on the COVID list. He has not gotten any playing time so far this season. So, for the Nashville Predators fan base, this will be the first opportunity for them to see their new starting backup goaltender. Mastradamus will be here in just a couple of minutes to give us a couple of thoughts, breakdown, and numbers on the Nashville Predators backup goaltender that, frankly, we do not have a lot of information on as far as the Nashville Predators' time in his career. Looking at the St. Louis Blues, Perron always deadly against the Nashville Predators. Six plus five for 11 points. Tarasenko, another one that always does very well against the Nashville Predators. He got four goals in the season and seven assists for 11 points. And Tori Krug out there on the blue line, two and six for eight points. Jordan Bennington, six, two and one. Bit of a head case, but he's got good numbers on the season. Nine, two, eight, save percentage, a 2.44 goals against average. And I anticipate he'll be in net for the St. Louis Blues. But again, Mastradamus coming up here in just a couple of minutes to help us with that particular storyline. On the scoreboard in the NHL tonight, besides the National Predators, Toronto beat Philly 3 to nothing. Minnesota was leading Arizona 4-1 to when I turned the TV off and came out here to the bunker here at the end of the second period. A lot of games on the schedule coming up on Thursday night. As a matter of fact, it looks like the bulk of the league is on the ice. Let me give you a couple of highlights on the schedule, especially concerning the Central Division. San Jose is going to be in Winnipeg. Vancouver is in Colorado and Minnesota is going to be at Vegas. So Minnesota has back-to-back games just like the Nashville Predators do. So the Minnesota score is incomplete. Minnesota could be in first place once this recording has completed. So once you are viewing that, please make sure you check the updated standings. Now, we've got a whole lot to talk about as far as what happened with the Nashville Predators continuing on the CMA road trip and their first game against the Dallas Stars this season. It was, in fact, November the 10th of the year 2021, and the Nashville Predators rolled out the following lines. Cunning 
and Granlin and Duchesne, Jano, Johansson and Tomasino, Trennan, Sissons and Tolvanen, McCarran, Novak and Olivier. So McCarran and Olivier getting the call up since Forsberg goes on IR and Borbietsky also out injured. McCarran, small sample size, but we know he's big and he's physical and he's in the lineup on the fourth line. And it's great to see Olivier back in the lineup. We're big fans of Matthew Olivier here in the bunker and in the trenches. The Renegades of Puck are a big fan of that particular player. And seeing Juno get an opportunity with some of the top end skill players, that's great because he has more offensive upside than perhaps some of the other players on the herd line. And being able to get all four members of the herd line into the lineup is incredible. Yossi and Fabro at home and Benning, Carrier at Myers gets another opportunity on the ice. UC Saros gets the start in net. 217 into the first period. Sissons shot from high stop by Holtby with the blocker at 454. We see Ben off the box. Two minutes for high sticking. Dallas PK controls the situation, only giving up one fairly harmless shot on goal against. Now it's tight out there. Everything is being contested. Every puck is being battled for. And frankly, there are no scoring opportunities for approximately 10 minutes of this first period. 1451. Cunning stopped on the doorstep after a great feed by Duchesne. 1543. Heskinen stick handles to the top of the crease, but is denied by UC Saros. At 1909 in the first period, we see Ryan Johansson with his fifth goal of the season. A full length of the ice give and go backhand finish. No half stepping all the way by both of these players. Both of these players were contested all the way down the ice, and both of them battled hard through checks to finally get the finish. This was highly impressive effort by Juno and Johansson, and I love seeing every single bit of it. So at 1909 in the first period, the Nashville Predators have a one to nothing lead over the Dallas Stars. That takes us to intermission. Nashville Predators carrying the momentum and out shooting Dallas 8 to 5. 451 of the second period. There's Juno again on the score sheet, his fifth goal of the season. This time off the rush, it was a no-look far side upper 90. He rolled the wrists real quick and nobody seemed aware of it. And it was in the net before Holpe could even react. Tanner Juno's fifth goal of the season gives a Preds a 2-0 lead in Dallas at 6.53 of the second. Sorrow save on Robertson Fabro. Great job clearing the rebound. First shot of the period for the Dallas Stars at 9-16. Carries off to the box. Two minutes for interference. Now, this should not have been a penalty, but the veteran Pavelski absolutely worked the ref. He threw his arm up over the shoulder of Carrier and then pretended he was being slowed down or being impeded. That was not the case. Saros comes up with a big, huge save on Sagan as the power play expires. And honestly, this was an excellent PK by the National Predators. Unfortunately, 12.05. Cunnins off to the box. Two minutes for slashing on Heiskanen. Saros comes up with a save on Goryanov plus the jam stuff attempt. Carrier at this point is hit in the head by Sagan's one-timer. He leaves the ice with help and would not return. Scary situation for Alex Carrier out there on the ice. We just talked in the last episode of Renegades of Puck TV about how much we loved his progression and how much we liked the way he goes about the game out there. He turned to try to limit the damage on the block shot, and unfortunately, the one-timer gets him just seemed at the base of the helmet. No speculation on injuries here. We just hope that he is all right, and I cannot wait to see him back on the ice. I Really, it was a very, very scary situation. You can tell the entire rink in Dallas went completely silent for a couple of moments there while they helped carry off the ice. After that, though, back to action. UC Saros does have to come up with a huge save. Uh, the glove on Rattleoff. 15.35, the puck bounces over the top of the net from behind, but UC Saros is able to keep it cool, tracking it all the way. No problem here. 17.36, Matt Duchesne's got a sixth goal, team leading for the Nashville Predators, giving them a 3 to nothing lead. It was a three-on-one sprung by Benning. Duchesne goes bar down and beats Holtby easily. Holtby seemingly looking for a totally different play, unaware that Duchesne has been red hot, was definitely going to take that shot all the way. And listen, that three-on-one's impressive, but you got to give the stick taps to Benning for springing that thing all the way from the D zone. He made a hell of a pass right there. He deserves some credit. 3 nothing for the Nashville Predators. But Rupe Hintz, who has definitely made an early part of his career, scoring against the Nashville Predators, picks up his first of the season. He catches the puck side of the crease. He puts it down, and he stuffs it in with some jam. It's all legal. It's all good out there. And Dallas is on the board. The Preds still have a 3-1 to lead, though, at the end of the second period. Dallas now out shooting Nashville 17-16. to 2-23 into the third period. Sissons, smooth handle in close. McCarron gets the rebound, but it goes 
over the top. 5-17, Saro stops Roffel's breakaway. Impressive save by UC Saro, sliding to the left and making the pad save at 8-27. Saro save on the long shot by Klingberg. Great D support yet again on a rebound opportunity, clearing the puck out of danger. At 8.56, Yossi's off to the box. Two minutes for holding. I do not agree with this particular call. Heiss can an easy finish after Radulov set up. They moved the puck around very quickly, and the Nashville Predators got themselves a little bit out of position, and Dallas has their second goal of the game. Now, the Preds have a 3-2 lead in the third period. At 12.39, Yossi Saros has a quick reaction save with the blocker on a redirect from the Low circle. This was a highly impressive piece of athleticism by the Nashville Predators goaltender. Much, Charlie, we'll 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 we hit the empty net scenario with 153 to go, and the Nashville Predators are Predators. under absolutely insane in and Dallas. intense pressure, Four and they are completely out of gas when Colton Sissons finds the puck of the on his stick. And he's able to unload injury, from the defensive zone into the empty well net, giving that, the Nashville the Predators come out a 4-2 lead One and thing putting this game away. Colton's second the goal of the season Braden happened to be the Nashville Predators' Braden first shot on goal in 16 minutes of the third period. Just to show you how intense the pressure was on the comeback for the Dallas Stars. The Preds had a 3 nothing lead. They almost gave it back, but they closed this thing out. 4-2. Dallas outshoots Nashville 27 to 22. You don't, you can't really explain comes the up have huge great success in the against third guys like period. Him, so ben for the Bishop, National Predators, Jonathan able to pick up a victory in Dallas, not a building they've had a lot of success in in recent memory, well and not a team they've had a lot of success against again, in only recent memory. So good job by the National Predators. They did what they had to do. They got the two points on the front end of the back-to-back. Now, go into St. Louis and try to secure yourself another point. Maybe find yourself two more points in the standings before you come on home from that CMA road trip face off against the Arizona you Coyotes. See, now listen, a right-handed if you saw anything shot, tonight, you saw UC well Saros make a couple of really so huge saves, especially an impressive save on the breakaway. I want to hear from Mastradamus about that. Overall, the numbers, 25 out of 27 as UC Saros picks up the victory in this one. He's the starting goal of the Renegades. If you can find him on Twitter at Greek Goalie 35, and he's going to tell you everything that happened tonight between the Nashville Predators and the Dallas Stars. Bosh, it's all yours. Ryan Suter and Braden Holtby goes quickly to his forehand and roofs it blocker side. One I think he does want back. It wasn't a perfect shot per se, but it was one that you could tell he wanted that one back. But Braden Holtby, again, just not very good against the Nashville Predators throughout his career. On the other hand, you go UC Saros. UC Saros stops 25 out of 27. Looked like he was going to have a fairly easy go of things. The Nashville Predators did a pretty good job of keeping things under control, not giving up a whole lot of great scoring chances for the most part. Then the third period happened, holding on to a two-goal lead, and that's what happens. N Dallas smelled blood. They got a, a power play that they capitalized on on a kind of weak hold against Roman Yossi uh, right along the blue line there. But they capitalized. They did what they needed to do to get back in the game. But, again, UC Saros not giving up anything more than two goals. That's now the sixth straight start. He's given up two or less goals. Ever since he gave up those six goals against Winnipeg, two or less in every single start since then, and nine out of ten overall that he's given up two or less goals. He is giving the Nashville Predators a chance to win by scoring just three goals. That's three goals, you know, is not that much to ask for out of out of your team to do that on a consistent basis. UC Saros putting his team in position to do that. So next up, next up, you have St. Louis in St. Louis. Quick turnaround for the Nashville Predators. Interesting to see what John Hines does with his lineup with the injury to Carrier. Not likely he will play in this one. Also, we'll see the Predators debut for David Riddick. Uh, 907 career save percentage, 2.82 goals against. Not great by any stretch of the imagination. That's why he's a backup goaltender in this league. Connor Ingram getting work up in the AHL. So people would wonder why isn't he in here as a backup. But as we saw, Preds will lean heavily on UC Saros this season, except for back-to-backs. You're probably going to look at Saros 95% of the time. If it's not back-to-back, -back, he's going to play uh, in net. On the other end, Jordan Binnington will be in there for St. Louis. Impressive 928 save percentage this year, 2.44 goals against, 6-2-1 on the season for the St. Louis Blues. So the Preds, tough matchup, injury, lineup changes sure to happen as well for tomorrow night. 
Charlie, back to you. He's the starting goaltender of the Renegades. The puck, you can find him on Twitter at GreekGoalie35. And I am so appreciative of having Mastradamus here in the trenches with the Renegades of Puck. He's on the front lines gaining the intel that you need to know. And he was monitoring everything coming from the head coach, John Hines, after the game tonight. From on the forecheck.com, you can also find him here on Renegades of Puck TV or on Twitter at SCSOTF. He is, of course, Sean C. Smith. He's got the intel that you need to know, and he's going to deliver that right now. Thanks, Charlie. Hey, Renegades, it's Sean C. Smith. A few takeaways from the game against Dallas. The first thing I want to talk about is identity. The Predators have worked incredibly hard this season to build an identity as a team. And I'll say they got away from that identity if you look back at the Chicago game because they didn't give a full 60 minutes on the ice. If you look at the first couple of periods, they weren't playing the hardest they could play. They got a little bit sloppy. And because they didn't play all 60 of those minutes, uh, they didn't wear their opponent down. And of course, against Dallas, you saw the team play all 60 of those minutes on the ice. And they were able to come away with two big points and a very, what I would say, be physical, uh, dom physically dominant win. And that's what I think you're looking for out of this team. Um, but that also kind of speaking of identity leads me to talk about something else. Hines had to contend with some injuries on this road trip. And of course, with the loss of Forsberg initially, and now Nick Cousins as well, he had to make some, uh, some moves. He had to bring some guys up. And I think the moves he made were very smart. He brought up Matthew Olivier. And then while he brought up McCarron as well, I want to focus on Olivier. I had the opportunity to talk to John Hines before the game tonight. And I, I kind of mentioned like, hey, I noticed that this is what you're doing. This is where you're playing these guys. It seems like a really smart thing to do because you're able to maintain that identity of the, the herd line that we've heard so much about. Actually go back to the original um, configuration of the herd line with the Biloxi Bull, Matthew Olivier coming in to play with Yakov Trinan and Colton Sissons. But what that allows the team to do is maintain that line's identity and continue that hard checking line that uh, can score on you, but is also very physically dominant. But it also frees up Tanner Janot, who is a, a player this season who I think the Predators have realized has a lot more to offer than, than simply playing on a, on a line that's out there to, to really play physically hard. He has a scoring touch. He's finding the back of the net. And uh, I was really hoping to see that it would pay off for Hines tonight, and I think it did. If you look at what happened, Tanner Janot put on a show. And I'll, I'll say this. I had the opportunity to talk to Tanner after the game and, of course, I noted that he was uh, one fight away from the Gordie Howe hat trick. And um, I asked him if the guys were kind of pushing him, of course, on the bench. Hey, go out and get the last piece of it, get in that fight. And he didn't really bite on the question. I think that's okay. This is a guy who uh, definitely appreciates the opportunity he has, the contract he's earned, having earned a contract at every level uh, that he's played at since juniors. And so uh, he's not, <laughs> as much as I'd like him to joke around about that kind of stuff, he gave the right answer. And that was that, you know what, the fight would have had added nothing to the game at that point. He was focused on doing what the team needed to do and what was best for the team in order for them to get that win. And that's exactly what they came away with. Um, also want to say this, you have two guys on this team who are putting on an offensive show. And that's Ryan Johansson and Matt Duchesne. If you go all the way back to the beginning of the season, we've talked about this ad nauseum. This is what you wanted to see out of these guys for a long time, and you're getting it this season. These guys were left out there dangling in the wind, free for Seattle to pick up, and Seattle passed on both of them. And I think that's lit a fire under both of them, and you're seeing the results of that on the ice. And if that's what it takes. That's what it took to get these players to go out there and be the best versions of their self they could be. Then I'm very happy that it's happened. And uh, you know what? I like the results. I'm not going to complain. So St. Louis game coming up, and I will talk to you guys after that. I'm going to throw it back to you, Charlie. You can find him on Twitter at SCSOTF, or you can read his work at onthefourcheck.com and watch him right here, Renegades of Puck TV, a rising superstar in the world of covering not only the Nashville Predators, but hockey in general. I'm so proud and excited to work with Sean C. Smith right here in the trenches. Now, I got to go out to the Renegade Analytics desk and talk to Brian Baston because there were a lot of stats and a lot of numbers and a 
lot of things that happened in tonight's game that perhaps might have started to slip through the cracks, and that's exactly why we go out to Brian Baskin at the Renegade Analytics Desk. You can also track Brian's working on the 4 or watch him right here on Renegade to Puck TV on Twitter. Find him at Brian Baston. Let's go over to the Renegade Analytics Desk right now. Brian, take it away. Thanks, Charlie. The Predators won a nail-biter against the Dallas Stars in a series that's been close ever since it started. Of course, you remember last season how it ended where the playoff push came down to a series of games that all went to overtime against the Dallas Stars. And throughout the history of this franchise, this rivalry that we've seen flare back up in recent years has been close from the very beginning. In fact, coming into tonight, the Predators' all-time series record against the Dallas Stars was 45-45, one and five, with those five being overtime losses. That amounts to a perfect 500 points percentage. The series was as even as even could get coming into tonight. Of course, that all oh, that'll change tonight after tonight's win. And tonight's one big stat is now the Nashville Predators hold a winning record over the Dallas Stars. And that's tonight's one big stat. Thanks, Charlie. That was Brian Baston from on the forecheck.com with one big stat. You can find him on Twitter at Brian Baston. Listen, Renegades, we've had a lot to talk about tonight. I sure do appreciate each and every one of you jumping in the trenches with the quick turnaround. We wanted you to get you as much intel and as much information as possible, as quickly as possible. So let's get this thing turned around. Let's get these links spread. Let's get it passed along. And by the time you wake up tomorrow morning, the sun rises, we'll already have had this full show already up and ready to go. So we appreciate each each and every one of you jumping in the trenches. There's a lot more numbers we can get into, but we'll spend a little bit more time recapping the entirety of the road trip after the National Purge wrap things up in St. Louis. So remember, renegadesofpuck.com. Follow us on all of our social media platforms. And if you'd like to chip in a couple of dollars here to support the Renegades of Puck, be a partner of the Renegades, scan this QR code right here, or go to Venmo and search Renegades of Puck. I am so appreciative of each and every one of you for jumping in the trenches with us, especially over on the live feed on Twitch. They get the intel and the info first. They're watching a different feed than you're watching. While we are recording, they are seeing everything going out completely live. So if we happen to make any mistakes like we did at the beginning of this recording, they happen to get that right there. So we appreciate them for joining us on Twitch, and we'd appreciate if you would give us a follow over there on that particular social media platform as as well. We'll be back in the bunker tomorrow night, wrapping up the St. Louis game and wrapping up the CMA road trip. A lot of hockey to talk about, my good Renegades, and I sure do appreciate each and every one of you for doing that here in the trenches with the Renegades of Puck. Remember, support the outlets that are talking about the topics that you want to hear about. Stop giving the airtime to those other outlets that don't care about the topic that you want to hear about. All right? Easy enough. Pass the links around, spread the word, give us a follow, give us a like, give us a subscription, a comment, all of that good stuff. And I appreciate each and every one of you. We'll see you tomorrow right here on Running Gates of Puck TV for Mastronomus, for Sean C. Smith, for Brian Baston, for the ultimate one, and of course for Kyle Perkins. And tonight, I got to tell you, our special associate producer, Gentry Smith. Sure to appreciate you jumping in tonight on the Twitter feed. You gave us a great meme that allowed us to get some things done on the show and have a lot of fun as the game was going along. So we sure to appreciate you for giving us the bad contract boys, the BCB. People should give you some stick taps, some love, and some respect at GSmith988. So that's at GSmith988. Thank you, Gentry. Appreciate you so much, man. I didn't have a chance to talk to you on Twitter tonight, but I want to give you a shout out here on the show from the desk in the bunker. Hey, listen, for each and every one of you renegades of puck, I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonia. Stick taps, love, respect.